Hallelujah and good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, great to come to worship God uh, together and thank the Lord we have uh, better weather now. <laughs> uh, yes, last week we, it was a challenging one. We, we have to put electric fans all over. So, <laughs> cool us. Um, I, I attended a, a kind of workshop yesterday and I shared it in my Facebook, but I want to share it to you again. Um, uh, I thought it was very encouraging also to me uh, personally uh, because not only I'm working with uh, two congregations but I also work with other congregations in, in the district and uh, sometimes as you work with people uh, you know how it is when you want to do something and then that plan that you have doesn't work and then you try again it doesn't work you know it's almost like it's a failure and you keep trying and and then you don't want to try again because you don't, you know, you don't want to, I think this cannot be done and it's so difficult. And so when I work with different pastors and same thing with, with us in this congregation, sometimes that happens, you get the, really this feeling of uh, discouragement. And so one of the scriptures shown to us uh, yesterday was the story of the disciples who were uh, fishing. Remember, I don't have to go there, remember the story of the disciples for you know one whole night they were fishing and then when Jesus Christ saw them in the morning and you know Jesus asked them and they said they with they look exhausted and tired and they said I'm on Jesus we've been fishing for the entire evening for the whole night and we caught nothing I mean remember that story like they they did their best to catch fish but there was no fish. And you know, I look at the, our own human situation where when you try so much and it seems like it's not working, it's so easy to just get discouraged, exhausted, and, and quit. But the amazing thing was Jesus Christ did not really, did not correct them for uh, fishing wrongly. Because these are good fishermen. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. And all that Jesus Christ says, okay, just throw your net on the other side. Of course, that's not even on the other side. Like, do fish only go on the other side of the boat? Right? Obviously, there is a, a lesson there. There's, you know, there is a lesson that Christ is teaching them. That when we go through life's difficult moments, when everything seems to be discouraging and difficult, whether in our job, family, church, or whatever, uh, we should not ever give up. You know, should never ever surrender. As long as we continue to trust Jesus and obey His words and His instruction, just in faith follow, Jesus Christ gave them fish. I mean, that's what's beautiful about that story. It's not really their ability, it's not about their technique of fishing, right? So it, in that, that story is not just nuts and bolts of ministry, but it's nets and bolts. Ministry, you know? <laughs> choosing the nets proper. Um, there was even a story where they threw the net and the net burst, right? Because there's too much. So sometimes if the fish get out, you don't even catch them, and they can they continue trusting Jesus. And when they fish again, so all the fishes were taken. Sometimes the things that you work for, you work hard, you might lose, but then you stay faithful. You still stay faithful to the Lord. And, and towards the end of that story, Jesus Christ was talking to the fisherman named Peter. And uh, I think it's also related to the um, principles of ministry. Where Jesus asked Peter, uh, Peter, do you love me? How many times did he ask Peter? Three times. And then before he said, feed my lambs, he, Jesus Christ asked Peter, do you really love me? Do you love me more than these? You know, I, I used to imagine that, I wonder who are the these? Were they the disciples or were they the fish? <laughs> and the Bible did say, yeah, maybe they were, they were fishing out there, you know, because, you know, fishermen, their fish is very important. Remember later on, Jesus said, I want you to become fishers of men. So Jesus said, hey, Peter, do you love me more than this? You know, maybe it's the fish, right? He's asking that question. So I think in ministry, something that I am beginning to see more clearly important is, is our relationship with God. 
that, that God is going to bless this ministry, this effort, as we also respond to His love. You know, the, the growth, the, the multiplication, the blessings, that's easy for God. But God just wants us to love Him. So three times do you love me? So I think as a congregation, you know, we, you know, we started this congregation with 12 people. We went to up to 100 and probably the next kind of burst and so forth. But, you know, we, it's, it's, it's another story where you know, we live in a consumeristic society where people basically go to churches like a mall and basically, you know, the one that, oh, I can, I, I love this, I love this. Uh, but in that story is, you know, our love, our love, are we committed to uh, loving Jesus? And Christ is asking that, do we love Him? And I'm not asking you, about, I ask myself, you know, as a pastor, as a husband, as a father, do I love Jesus? I think for me to be an effective pastor, an effective husband and father, I must be able to answer that. Well, you know, me and my God, yes, Lord, I love you. You know, and really mean it. That to me is important. So that's something I learned in the uh, workshop we had yesterday. It's really critical that whoever you are right now, whatever trials you are going through, some failures and difficulties, wake up. You know, don't lose hope. Because God, our Jesus, has, will never ever abandon us. He can fill this like net filled with fish. He can just stay faithful to the Lord, faithful to God, and let's make sure that's what's most important. Our love of God. Jesus says, do you love me? And let's, if we, I think, you know, all of us just love God so much, love Him so much, miracles will start happening. Amen? Okay, so today we will have a discipleship class after the snacks and uh, we are going to talk about what we, I just talked about today. Basically, what is the role of the church? And for you who are involved in ministry, I want you to be there so we can really talk about, okay, what is the purpose of the church? Where are we going as a congregation? You know, I think it's important and then we will also examine not only the purpose of the church, what the church is about, but also, you know, a brief uh, background of the church in the early New Testament times and, and talk about it. So I think it's going to be a good, uh, good discussion for discipleship. Okay, uh, uh, we do have uh, the, the snacks afterwards. And uh, any other announcements that the... Uh, hmm? Yes? Oh, we have, okay. <laughs> They're not here. Uh, birthdays, uh, manicure, and uh, common. And uh, congrats, is that congrats? Congrats? Grats. Grats. Is, uh, it's also Anthony's birthday? No, no, no. no. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, the engaged. Oh, the engaged. <laughs> Anthony. Virginia. The engaged. Of course I know. I'm just joking, right? <laughs> They're engaged. So uh, everybody says, Congratulations. What is happening October 11th? Wedding. Wedding. Otto and Michelle. And you are invited. Right? That's, that's great. So October 11th, that's a Saturday. It's going to be 4 p.m. right here. And that's how many weeks from now? Saturday. 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 Yeah, okay, so please uh, join us, you know, pray for the success we begin uh, this Wednesday. And we are impacting lives of young kids. They say if you start when they are teens, it's too late. You have to start young, you know, when sharing the gospel. Okay, let's go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Lord, for your reminders that you will never, ever forsake us 
nor abandon us because that's who you are. Yahweh Shama, God is present. God is here. You are everywhere. You are omnipresent. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for reminding us to never be discouraged, Lord. There is always hope because we have you, Lord God. You are the ones that make the increase, that produces, that gives life. So we trust you, Lord God. And help us, Lord God, to look at ourselves and ask Jesus' question. Do we love Jesus? Lord, help us to focus on our hearts and that we live our lives truly loving you. Thank you, Lord, and we pray for those who have uh, love relationships, as in uh, Regina and Anthony, Lord, as they plan on their wedding coming soon. And also, Lord, for Otto and Michelle, may you bless them, Lord, abundantly. May you be with them, give them the protection, give them all the blessings they need so that they will have a great wedding ceremony and a great marriage. Thank you, Lord, for everyone here. And all this we ask and pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.